friends, welcome to Factology. Here we upload videos about cameras, smartwatches, mobile phones, and practically any gadgets that are interesting and good for you. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, then subscribe now. In today's episode, we're going to do a short review of the Nikon D500 camera. Now, it's been a long time since Nikon launched the D300, a camera that arrived at roughly the same time as the very first iPhone. Yep, it was that long ago. The camera's successor, the D300S, hit the market last decade, too. But now, the long wait for a replacement model is over. The Nikon D500, the spiritual D300 successor, is here, and it's been making waves. The full-frame sensor is replaced by a 20.9 MP APS-C size chip, so it hasn't gotten quite the same resolving power as the D7200, but the small sacrifice in resolution is worth it for a number of reasons. ISO performance is brilliant, with an expanded setting that hits an equivalent of ISO 1, 640,000, while it can rattle off a burst of 200 raw shots at 10 FPS. A brilliant all-rounder, it excels at fast action like sports and wildlife photography. Let's talk about features. APS-C MOS sensor 20.9 MP, 3.2 inch tilt angle touchscreen, 2,359,000 dots, and a 4K video capture. One surprise about the D500 is that its APS-C sensor has 20.9 million effective pixels. That's less than the company's other recent 24 MP DSLRs of the same format. This is to enable the photo size to be bigger to improve low light performance. Interestingly, the D5 announced at the same time has 20.8 million pixels on its full frame sensor. And the two cameras use the same sensor architecture built to Nikon specification. If the D500 sensor was scaled to match the D5s, it would have 48.6 million effective pixels. In addition to the imaging sensor, there's a new 180,000 pixel RGB sensor that handles metering and white balance, as well as informing automatic scene recognition system to help improve autofocusing with better subject detection. Having the same pixel count as the D5, but on a smaller sensor, means the D500's photoreceptors are smaller. And this naturally has an effect on their light gathering power and low light performance. Consequently, the D500 doesn't quite have the same outlandish sensitivity range as the D5. Its standard range, ISO 100, is 51,200, with five expansion settings taking it up to the equivalent of ISO 1 640,000, a stop lower than the D5's maximum of ISO 3's 280,000, but still an incredibly high figure. Whereas the D5's 4K shooting capability is limited to three minutes, it's possible to shoot 4K UHD video for up to 29 minutes and 59 seconds with the D500. As usual, there are lower resolution video modes and full HD footage can be shot in 60p for slow motion playback. In addition, 4K UHD time-lapse movies can be created in camera and there's electronic vibration reduction to reduce the impact of camera shake when shooting movies handheld. Like the D5, the D500 has a 3.2 inch, 2,359,000 dot screen that's touch sensitive. Unlike the D5, however, this can be used to set the AF point. The D5's limited to use when reviewing images and inputting text for copyright information and the like. As befits a camera aimed at professionals and serious enthusiasts, the D500 has two card slots. One accepts SD type media, while the other is for faster XQD cards. Although they've been around for quite some time, XQD cards haven't become commonplace yet, as with most cameras only accepting SD type media, but this could be set to change. The D500 is an excellent camera and one that will serve many enthusiasts well giving them first-rate systems they desire in a smaller, more affordable body than the D5. While some may be a little disappointed that the D500 doesn't have 24 million pixels on its sensor like the Nikon's other recent DX format, DSLRs, don't be. 
as the small sacrifice and resolution is worth it for the payoff and sensitivity performance. So that was the short review. I hope you like it. To read the full review, please visit the link given in the description.